Let's stand for the pledge to call this meeting to order. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Honorable Mayor Ron Shaver. Here. Council Member Dan Marler. Here. Doug Shasso. Here. Allison Howe. Present. Clint Anderson. Here. Lisa Northrup. Here. Kevin Lindell. Kevin has an excused absence this evening. Okay. First item on our agenda tonight is recognition of Matt Pickering as the employee of the quarter for the third quarter of 2018. Mr. Wells and Mr. Hamer. It's uh, my privilege tonight to present to council and the public um, our favorite golf pro. You're our golf pro now, right? Well, thank you. Matt Pickering. He's been with us for several years, and this summer he took over a pretty important job in running the golf course while Ty was helping us fill in on some other uh, issues that we were taking care of. Uh, some of the things that I really love about Matt is that he's always friendly. Uh, he always has the right answer, right? Always has the right answer. Uh, but he... Um, he really is what we want at the city of Fort Morgan as far as employees goes. He has positive communication. He respects others. Uh, he provides exceptional customer service. And he's just a really nice guy. So if you haven't been out to the golf course, we encourage everybody to go out there at least once a year. Uh, more if you can. Uh, and, and meet uh, Matt and his folks out there. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Ty for a couple minutes. Um. I don't know what, what can I say about Matt. He's just an inspiration to all of us. Um, he's he like Jeff said. He covered all the operations at the golf course this summer, and exceeded my expectations. So um, it's it's an honor, and I'm proud to um, let you know he's your employee of the quarter. So good job, Matty. Thank you. As employee of the quarter, there are certain perks. Uh, he gets his picture that he gets to take home, and a picture will be posted downstairs in Historic City Hall. Oh. There will also be a $100 gift certificate and a certificate of employee of the quarter, and uh, Ty will also present him with a manager's gift. So uh, we really want to let the employees know that we appreciate their hard work and really want to recognize Matt Pickering as our employee of the quarter. So thanks again. Thanks, Matt. Next is presentation of a Colorado Association, the Chiefs of Police Accreditation Plaque, the Fort Morgan Police Department. Chief Schultz, John Camper. Well, thank you, Mayor, City Council. Um, we've invited uh, uh, John Camper, the director of the Colorado Bureau of Investigation and president of the Colorado Association Chiefs of Police to join us this evening uh, to present our department and our city with our accreditation plaque from CACP. And I'll turn it over to him at this point, John. <coughs> Excuse me. Thanks, Chief. Uh, Mayor, members of council, thank you. Uh, again, my name is John Camper. I'm currently director of CBI, but also serve as president of the Colorado Association of Chiefs of Police. So it's kind of in that capacity that I'm joining you here tonight. Uh, my purpose is to present your chief, Paul Schultz, uh, and his uh, excellent department with a certificate from the police chiefs and the county sheriff's association, uh, which has found that the Fort Morgan Police Department has met or exceeded the state standards for accreditation. Uh, a little bit about accreditation, there's 239 law enforcement agencies in Colorado Currently, only 39 of them are, are about 16% of all law enforcement agencies uh, are accredited. And the reason for that is it's not an easy process. It involves a lot of work and a lot of commitment, uh, a lot of time by the entire department. Uh, in order to become an accredited agency, the Fort Morgan PD had to meet some 213 pre-established professional standards, uh, which were then verified by an on-site assessment by three law enforcement officials from other jurisdictions. Uh, standards include things like ethics, organization, crime prevention, uh, operations, and, and many, many others uh, that are verified by an on-site assessment. Uh, and again, the Fort Morgan PD met or exceeded uh, all of the established standards. Um, 
I should note, uh, in fact, that this uh, achievement is considered to be so important that if uh, Fort Morgan PD happens to be a CIRSA agency, the, the accreditation may even uh, reduce insurance costs. Uh, they, they take it extremely seriously uh, and see it as a true sign of professionalism. Uh, you can be very proud of your police department and its employees. Uh, <laughs> Chief Schultz and his staff are obviously committed to providing quality law enforcement services to your community and this accreditation really is a testament to the professionalism of his entire agency and uh, each of its members. So on behalf of the Colorado Association of Chiefs of Police and the County Sheriffs of Colorado, it's my pleasure to present the Fort Morgan Police Department and Chief Paul Schultz with this accreditation plaque. It is well earned. So let me get this out here. And it says, Fort Morgan Police Department, having fully demonstrated its voluntary commitment to Colorado law enforcement excellence through compliance with the professional standards set forth by the Colorado Association of Chiefs of Police upon recommendation of the Board of Directors is hereby awarded this certificate of accreditation. And it was effective the 30th day of, Octo day of October 2018 and is good for a period of five years. So congratulations, Chief. And Thank you. If, if I might uh, take a minute as well. First of all, I want to thank Mr. Camper for coming out and uh, presenting this. It's a real honor to have you here at our meeting tonight, as well as all the other uh, representatives of law enforcement here tonight. We've got people from Brush PD, the Sheriff's Department, and of course our own department. Um, a few years ago, this is kind of a culmination of, of some things that we wanted to see happen a few years ago before Paul was actually brought on board to uh, work here at the City of Fort Morgan. It's been about two years now, can you believe it? Um, and one of the things that uh, we heard from uh, employees in the police department and things that we wanted to see happen was that we had a standard of excellence that they could demonstrate not just within our community but outside the community. And what this uh, recognition means to our community is that the citizens can rest assured that we have a top rated uh, law enforcement agency that takes into consideration the rights and the values and the culture of our community. This award is just as important for everybody that serves on our police department because we can't get this award unless we have the best people working for us. So I wanna thank all the individual officers, but most, most importantly, I, I wanna thank our uh, accreditation manager, which uh, he hates getting any kind of recognition and I'm looking at him and he's shaking his head. But Jared Crone did an exceptional job. Why don't you come on up, Jared? Uh, in, in being the manager and the person responsible for this. But I think it's very important that we recognize um, all of the members of our Fort Morgan Police Department and what they do on a day-to-day -day basis to meet these high standards. Um, I'd like to read a little bit of a letter that was uh, delivered to um, Chief Schultz from uh, Stephen Hassler, the Chief of Police in Elizabeth, who was the lead on our uh, assessment and he said, as the lead assessor assigned to Fort Morgan Police Department state accreditation, I would like to congratulate you not only on earning the state of Colorado state accreditation award, but having an extremely well run and efficient agency. To achieve state accreditation, I believe it is not just a matter of checking boxes and meeting certain standards. During the policy assessment and site vis visit, I investigated procedures not regularly examined and looked under stones not normally looked under. Not only did your agency pass these unannounced examinations, they passed them with an A plus score. Special mention goes out to your evidence and property technician and the efficiency of the evidence room and for the professional demeanor and helpfulness shown to the assessment team by all of your staff during this process. It is indeed a challenge to earn, a st earn state accreditation and so it should be. It puts you amongst the best of the best. Not many agencies achieve this sta that status due to its high standards. I congratulate you on running an extremely tight ship. So we need to thank Mary Holt for uh, her work in the evidence room and, and all of the other officers that made this happen and to Jared for being the manager over this and uh, for Chief Schultz and his excellent leadership and vision to get the department where it's at today. I know we've taken a little bit of flack uh, in recent months, undeserved flack, because we do have the best, and I know it's gonna bother maybe a few people in the room, but the best law enforcement agency in Northeast Colorado. So thank you. <laughs> uh, 
thank you, Jeff, and thanks, uh, Mayor, City Council, and John for joining us this evening. Just a couple of quick words in closing. Uh, just want to reiterate, this is an award that is reflective of all the officers in the department. All of you deserve this award. You, all of you deserve recognition. The hard work that all of you put in, as you know, we've been working on this for over a year. And uh, all of us, from every rank in the department, every employee of the department, I think has done a great job to get us where we're at. So we're very excited to be here. Um, it, it's really been an honor to receive this. Again, special recognition for Commander Crone. Our accreditation manager just did an outstanding job with this. I mean, he worked on this day and night for a long time and ups and downs to get this done. So again, thank you everybody for your hard work. Uh, thank you for your recognition and realizing what an award this is. And John, again, thanks for coming out and joining us. So thank you all. Great accomplishment, Chief, and your staff has done a phenomenal job. I know it's uh, had an accreditation before and it lapsed quite a while before you had got back here. And it's a pleasure to see it reinstated and I know it takes an awful lot of effort and it's a culmination of everybody in the department. So congratulations and thanks for bringing that back to Fort Morgan. Thank you. You make this council proud. Yep. So is everybody going to hang around for the rest of these? <laughs> We're doing electric rates. <laughs> it's exciting. They're running. They're running. <laughs> that was our cue for them. And that was a good time. Yeah. It's not on the agenda, but I can talk to you afterwards. That's our elected sheriff. Okay, next on the agenda is a presentation and discussion of, discussion of electric rate study. Mr. Wells, Mr. Krasowski. Thank you. Uh, I'm very pleased to introduce Mr. Krasowski tonight. Uh, he has been our rates consultant for the last several years, and he has done an exceptional job. And tonight, and not just an exceptional job because we seem to be holding rates in the right place, but he's really given us a lot of advice and insight uh, that I've been able to use as I've worked with the board in um, uh, in Lincoln, Nebraska, on our municipal power pool rates. Uh, we've done some things in the recent years that um, really relate to um, some very innovative things in the industry as a whole. Uh, our wholesale power rates um, have been redone, completely restructured, in a way that a lot of other agencies that provide wholesale power are looking at how we're doing things so that we can maintain a rate system that works very well. Um, tonight we've got great news. I'm not going to go into the details because that's why John does what he does. But I want to point out there's been some, um, you know, some discussions in the newspaper. I'm glad the press is here. We're always glad to have the press and on the internet about uh, different trips that I take out of state to Lincoln, Nebraska to represent the city of Fort Morgan. And I think it's important for the community to know that in the last three years, um, those meetings have saved rate payers somewhere between three and four million dollars in rates. And what does that mean? That means that we have the lowest uh, residential electric rates in the state of Colorado. Uh, we're very competitive in both industrial and commercial. And we do a very good job, not just in our rates, but if you look at our system, we have amazing employees that work in the electric department and they make sure that they are making the system um, fail proof. We have a very low uh, downtime whenever anything goes off. Now, putting all that into context, that doesn't happen 
uh, just once a year when we do rates. This is something that we're working on all the time. And so a few thousand dollars in trips that mostly were reimbursed by uh, Mean, I don't think is a bad return on investment for what we've seen for our rate payers. So John, I'm gonna turn it over to you to give everybody the details and the great news. Okay. I won't know, I won't steal the thunder. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Mayor, members of the council. Um, Correct pronunciation of my name is Kraski, but you know I'm I'm used to it getting butchered, and uh, it's a. It, I, I always tell people it's just like it. It's pronounced just like it looks, but uh, obviously, <laughs> obviously that's not the case. I was worried that with all the uh, members of the law enforcement community here tonight, it had something to do with me. But um, <laughs> I, I thought that light was green when I went through it, but I guess no. <laughs> Um, just to, real quick here on the background. Um, last time we looked at, at your rates was in 2017. Uh, and actually it was toward the end of 2016. The final report was presented in 2017. So it's been a couple of years. And what we, what um, Jeff called me and, and, and Jeannie called me as well and, and said, um, you know, we're looking at our deferred energy account and we think we need you to look at this. I'm like, okay, we'll take a look at it. Um, when I got the, when I received the deferred energy account projections, I was a little bit surprised. And I, I saw that and I said, yes, I understand why you're calling me. So what the deferred energy account is, is as part of your rates, we have two components. We have the component that pays for everything, I'll say in town, your wires, the people that work on the wires, the people that send out the bills, um, everything, everything I'll say inside the city limits related to your electric system. That's one part of your bill. And we fix that every time we do a rate study. The second part of it is basically a pass through of what you're paying to mean and what you're paying to WAPA. Those are your two main power suppliers. And we track how much you're paying them and how much you're collecting from your customers. And to the extent that you're collecting more from your customers than you're paying out, you accumulate a surplus. To the extent you're paying more to your suppliers than you're collecting from your customers, you have a deficit. A few years ago, when I was working with the city, you had a deficit, and we had to take some steps to, to address that. I want to uh, pile on to one thing that Jeff was saying about um, working with me and with regard to your rate structure. When I first started working with the city, I want to say it was probably about 2011, 2012, Mean had a, an element of their rate structure that was called, called a support energy rate. Full disclosure, Ron, uh, Mayor knows this, Jeff knows this, I used to work for Mean. And the support energy calculation was a bone of contention when I was there. I didn't like the way it was done. I left, they continued doing it, it got worse. Jeff calls me up and says, hey, I'm, I'm concerned about this. Jeff spent a lot of time with Mean, with other members of Mean that live, are in Colorado that are affected by it, lobbying with Mean staff, indicating that, hey, we have a problem with this and we're going to, we will fix this with you or without you. And without you, I felt was a very nuclear option. It would have involved litigation most likely. Um, it could have been the kind of thing that tore the entire organization apart. To Jeff's credit, he worked with me, uh, laid out what the issues were, um, indicated that, you know, that they were going, willing to fight it and we had a group of, of other constituents of me and that were actively involved in this. That is the single reason probably, the, the single most important reason I'm here tonight is because of those rate decreases associated with that. So I think Jeff does this, I mean, and, you know, traveling to Kearney or Lincoln, I mean, that's a thousand bucks a trip. I mean, it's nothing. Fixing the support energy issue probably saved the city $2 million a year. So I think I would agree it's probably a, an investment that was well worth it. Um, so the reason, the primary reason I have the good news tonight, and I'm, I'm used to delivering bad news, so it's kind of nice to have good news for once, is because you have been over collecting from your customers and it isn't like you get the city keeps it. We track it and then if it gets too far out of balance, we develop a, a rate refund or a mechanism to return that to the customers, and that's why I'm here tonight. All right. <clears throat> These are just some of the parameters I use to calculate this adjustment. <clears throat> I base it on, on means actual costs through 2018 and then use rates through the end of the year to figure out how much would be in the deferred energy account. Um, the calculated amount that I'm estimating that would be in the deferred energy account at the end of this year is about $6.1 million. And 
And so that $6.1 million, we looked at a couple different ways to refund that. We looked at refunding it over a two-year period. Um, that would have resulted in a very large rate decrease now, but the concern I, I had and staff had as well was you'd end up with this big dip for two years and then you have a bigger bounce. And so what we decided to do was we, when we looked at it over four years, you still have the dip, but you have a four-year period and they'll have a, a lesser increase at the end of that four-year period once the deferred energy account is back to zero. So we'll be reducing the deferred energy account by 25% per year beginning in 2019. So at the end of 2022, all other things remaining equal, the, the deferred energy balance should be zero. Here's just a quick calculation of how, you, how we come up with it. There's actually two components to this rate decrease. Uh, the, the first component is because you've accumulated all this money over the last few years, that means, means rates have gone down. So you're over collecting on that component of, of your rates as well. So the first thing we need to do is bring your rates down to match up with what you're paying mean. So that's $1.3 million roughly. And then we have this $6 million surplus to refund. We're returning that over the, over the four years, so that's $1.5 million a year. So what we're proposing is, I hate it when I find a typo on my slide when I'm standing up here, but um, we have a $2.8 million pass-through adjustment to refund to your customers. So we would divide that by your annual energy sales, 258 million kilowatt hours of sales. And what we end up with is not a 2017 that's on the bottom, that's actually January 2019. Um, we'll have about a 1.09 cent per kilowatt hour uh, reduction in your rates. And just by way of reference, if you, different customers pay a different amount, but overall I'd say your, your overall collections from your customers are probably in the 8 cent range, 7.8 to 8 cent range. So, that's a pretty significant decrease. Um, when, we look, when we look at the next slide, and I apologize for the small font on the, on the overhead, but if you look at what your annual revenue is, 21.2 million roughly was what we calculated in the 2017 rate study. Divide the re, uh, revenue reduction by that, you're looking at about a 13.3% rate decrease for your customers. Now, different customers will be affected differently by that. Um, customers that uh, I'll say like a larger, your larger users may have a little bit bigger dec decrease because they have a smaller customer charge. Residential customers may have a little smaller increase. Everybody's gonna see a decrease from this. I think your customer base should be very happy about this. And just by way to say too, if all your other costs remain the same for mean and your internal costs stay the same, and I'm not, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if your costs were to remain the same for mean and from your internal costs, this rate reduction would stay in place through 2022. And at that point, you'd have the, the surplus would be um, exhausted. And at that point, you'd have to look at probably raising rates a little bit to recover that $1.5 million. So I think this is very good news and it's not just a one year uh, flash in the pan type a change that's going to be in place for probably the next four years. Um, not saying that you're not going to have to have an increase to cover internal costs. I know Jeff's done a very good job of uh, making sure that your lineman salaries are competitive, that your system is in good shape. I know Brent does a great job with that too. Um, there may be need for rate changes for that. We'd have to come for that separately. Um, but certainly this is good news in terms of what your customers will be paying over the next four years. Um, I'll, this is just what I just said, uh, 1.09 cent reduction, uh, that, that, re that is a reduction on the energy rate component in your schedule of rates, uh, overall about a 13.3% decrease in your rates. So at this point, usually when I do a rate presentation, everybody's angry and they're firing uh, mean <laughs> questions at me and, and uh, I'm so, um, I think this is great. I think it's a reflection on, as I said, I think Mean has done some very good things over the last few years uh, with regard to managing their costs. Jeff's done a very good job of, of working with Mean on these issues, and and I, I think it's I'm, I feel happy to actually be able to be the one delivering this news. So, um, just a real quick on the regulatory issues. This is really Jason's issue, uh, uh, area, but uh, engineer playing a lawyer here. 
Uh, this is a pass-through adjustment, as I said earlier. You have this deferred energy account, so we're just passing through this through to your customers. My understanding of state law and talking to uh, Jason and other attorneys I've worked with is that this is considered a pass-through adjustment, and because it's a pass-through adjustment, we don't have to go through the procedures we did two years ago where we do a full rate hearing. So this can be done, I think, by, you do it by resolution, is that correct? And I've prepared, I believe, the language for the rate schedules and the resolution for your consideration. I'll let Jeff talk about the uh, schedule for implementation, but um, it's my recommendation that you would implement that effective J January 1st of 2019. So that, I'm done with my analysis. Uh, appreciate all the, uh, I, I want to, Thanks to staff for everything. I know Brent's not here, but I know Brent and Jeannie uh, did a great job of getting information to me and working with me to get this put together. So with that, I'll answer any questions. Anybody have any questions for John? I have a learning question for me. Sure. Um, I love your slides. Can you help me understand why four years was the magic number? Like, is it a combination of, like, market analysis over the next four years? Like, gas price, you know, what's the I, formula? I, I, I would like to say there was some major science to it. Um, but I'll say that it was probably just a consideration of how much that bounce was going to be. Mm -hmm. If we had done it over two years, you'd be looking at about a 20% decrease mm -hmm. for two years, but then you'd be looking at a 13% increase at the end of two years. Mm -hmm. It was done more to try to balance that out so that it's more of a, you know, the 13% increase now stays there for four years. And then I believe in 2023, you're looking at about a six or 7% increase as opposed to a, you know, a 13. Um, one thing in my work with rates, as I found, is that customers like stability. Um, when I do a rate study, I like to do a four-year projection because people don't like it if you raise their rates 12% one year, and the next year you lower them 10%, and the next year you raise them 8%, and then you lower, raise them another 6% when you could have just raised them 3% a year for four years. And, and because customers like stability, the idea of having a big decrease followed by a big rate increase just two years later, I, I didn't want to come out here and have to explain it, and I don't think you as a council want, I, I, think, I, I think it's just more beneficial to your customers to spread that over a longer period of time. If it had been $3 million, I probably would have done it over two years, because it would have been, it wouldn't have had the big rate shock uh, associated with it, so. It's, I'd like to say that I had some magic formula I didn't, it was just more of a, when I ran two years, I'm like, eh, which is normally what we would do. I just, I was very concerned about that, that whipsaw effect on your customers. Thanks. Okay. Flatten out the peaks and valleys. Right. And when, um, I'm not sure who yeah. direct the question okay. at, um, when would these take effect? I believe January 1st. January 1st. Yeah. You know, uh, another thing to point out that, you know, prior to us working with John and working with, uh, the other members of me, we were having double digit increases for several years and uh, you know, we've been able to back this off, uh, I think because of all the hard work and sound um, advice uh, from our consultant and his very good mathematical skills. So we're looking at the math, not the spelling, so don't mess <laughs> Thank you. So when it comes right down to it for the people that are out in the viewing public, what does this mean for, what does this ultimately mean for the average person come January 1st? I mean, I is think it? I put that in the report yeah. if I didn't. Um, uh, a typical residential customer using 883 kilowatt hours a month would see a monthly bill decrease of $9.62 per month. So. Makes Mer it tangible for people. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get through Thanksgiving. Okay. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. There we go. There, there go. we go. And then Merry Christmas. Black Friday shop. <laughs> so so yeah. we'll yeah. have uh, um, a resolution to modify this, Jason, right? Yeah, that's the next agenda item. So if there are any other questions, I just, I'd like to thank John and Jeannie and Brent and everybody that participated in, in working on this, but also all of our employees that really do the best they can to keep our costs down because that's important as well. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Thanks, John. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank and Merry Christmas because we won't see you. <laughs>
Okay, next on our agenda is council acting as the Board of Electric Department and System Enterprise of the City of Fort Morgan. Mr. Wells. So you've heard the uh, recommendations from John regarding our uh, electric rates and so for your consideration and thanks to Jason for preparing the uh, um, resolution, uh, we would ask council to take action to modify uh, the rates as proposed in the study and adopt the study. Okay. I would entertain a resolution accepting the rates to go. Sure. Your Honor, I would offer a resolution adjusting the electric rates for the electric department and system enterprise of the city of Fort Morgan. Second. I have a resolution by Lisa Northrup, a second by Allison Howe. Vote by roll call. That resolution carries on a unanimous vote of six to zero with council member Lyndall absent. Okay. Next is a presentation on bids for whole signs for Quail Dunes Golf Course. Mr. Hamer. Mr. Mayor, Council, um, good evening. Hopefully in your packet you got my memo. Um, this project has come about over two years really because it started with the shelters and improving the shelters on the golf course. If you remember in 2017, we had $20,000 budgeted in capital to build one shelter. Um, we were able to purchase two shelters and install them ourselves, which left $20,000 in this year's capital budget unaccounted for because it was going to be for the second shelter on the golf course. Um, when we approached you guys about the idea of purchasing two shelters at one time in 2017 and holding off on the second one um, that was budgeted for 18, at that point we kind of renamed that budget item to golf course improvement plan. Um, and so over the course of this year we've been trying to figure out what we could do to improve the golf course aesthetically, beautif beautification wise, um, something that would stand out to the players and the customers and the, the visitors to the golf course. Um, after talking with Matt Pickering and Matt Givens and the staff, as well as some of our regular customers, what we'd like to propose is to replace all of our T signs. Um, the T signs, the whole signs, are the things you see on the four by four posts that have the yardage of the hole, the par of the hole, um, the different tees and the ones we currently have have a layout on them of the hole. Um, those of you that play golf have probably noticed several of those are faded and kind of deteriorated, de dilapidated, I don't know the word, but what's supposed to be white has now turned brown, like on number 10 and number 12, I believe, are two of the worst ones. Um, so what we've researched is similar to the welcome rock that we put in by the number one T landscaping, the actual rock that's in Matt's picture that he's standing next to. It has the Quail Dunes logo and it says, welcome to Quail Dunes. So we researched replacing the hole signs with rocks that become hole signs and they will have the hole number, the par, the yardages, the logo on top. Um, we went out to bid. Um, had bids open for a week. We had one bid come back from Silex Signs out of Arizona. It's a company we worked with to purchase the Welcome Rock, so we're familiar with them. I also purchased a similar program at my last job from this company, but they were the only ones that responded to our request. Um, the second aspect to this whole idea is the rocks will actually have a spot for a sponsorship sign that can be mounted onto the T sign or the whole sign. Um, I put in your memo kind of a proposal or draft of what a sponsorship program might look like. Um, basically, we'd be selling advertising spots each year on the different hole signs. If by some miracle we sold, let's say, all 18 holes at $500 a sign, that's $9,000 in revenue a year if we renew annually. I mean, you could talk about it different ways. Um, but we'd love to create that sponsorship program and then earmark that revenue for future golf course beautification plans and projects of that nature. Um, so what you have today um, is two requests, sort of. Um, one is to request the bid from Silex Signs. Um, their bid actually came in 
a little different than what we want. So um, the total cost came down to the 19,000. 476 instead of what it was going to be 22,000 almost um, the staff has decided they would rather not have the entire layout of the whole you know the shape of the fairway and the green they just want to have the par the yardages the logo and the whole number um, it has a little cleaner look to it so um, that's our first request is to approve the purchase of new hole signs and then the second request is um, seeking input about the idea of the sponsorship program. Um, any comments or questions, you can email me later if you have ideas or any thoughts about what we might charge for an advertisement. Um, my previous job, we actually charged $1,700 for a two-year advertisement. So I don't think we'd be looking at that level, but somewhere in the $500 range. The way it would work is, you know, obviously we're not going to sell all 18 holes tomorrow. You know, it would take time. So we would order those sponsorship plaques that are mounted on the rock as we need them. And there is a little bit of a cost. It's about $110, I think, for each plaque. Um, they come from the company. They match the design of the rock. Um, so the idea would be quite possibly to have a little higher rate the first year that someone signs up to advertise and their renewal rate would be less because we've already covered the cost of the plaque. So that's what we're here tonight asking for. Any questions? Is the large sandstone? Yeah, one? it's, so it's, I think it's 36 wide and 24 high. Um, we would take down the four by four posts, um, replace those rocks in probably different locations than some of the whole signs are now, and then continue with our theme of the I don't know what color that rock is that I keep putting everywhere, but continue with that gravel rock and kind of landscape around those things to make them a little bit simpler. It'll actually reduce maintenance each year. Right now we're having to stain and maintain those posts. Um, like I said, a lot of those signs are already deteriorated and need to be replaced anyways. A lot of the posts are leaning over. Um, once we get the rock in place, the whole sign in place, and we have the zero scaping around it, it should kind of reduce some of the maintenance as far as weed whacking and tr string trimming and that kind of thing. We'll see. They look very classy. They look very... They do. It's a little bit more of a modernized, um, I don't know if it's modernized, but contemporary golf course look, where what we have right now is probably very old school, very old country club look. Um, this is something you would see in places like Mesquite and Arizona and, you know, probably the front range newer courses have similar things. And I like the fact that you're carrying through, you know, what the rock out, the rock out front looks like. Yep. It, just, it just pulls it all together. And when you're trying to bring in, you know, tourism and you're trying to bring in people to play, you want your course to look. Right. You know, you know and we, we've had lots of, since I've been here, lots of interest and requests from people wanting to sponsor or advertise in some way at the golf course mm. i think partially because they just mm. want to help the golf course but also i think they see an opportunity i mean there's you know we don't do a ton of rounds we do fourteen thousand rounds or so a year but it's a combination of city residents county residents front range people nebraska people traveling through so i think there is an opportunity for local businesses to maybe capture an audience um it would be a simple sign when it comes to the advertisement, basically business name and phone number. Um, but it, it might be worthwhile. I mean, if we can bring in $5,000 extra revenue a year and, and stash that away for future, what I you know call beauti beautification or aesthetics, um, I think that would be a positive thing. And I definitely don't think you're, I mean, the rate for the advertisement especially some larger companies that's that's a pittance and uh and that's why I, I wanted to make sure i put a big draft thing on that because that's like my f i just literally sat down and typed all that out and so we haven't ironed out those details and that might be you know something where we decide that we can actually charge more so i like it is that something we can do is keep it with the golf course I probably should ask Jeannie that first, but I <laughs> well, uh, my reason for asking. It would be probably strictly cash. And we would say then you just like you would get one for specifically used for seniors to them. Those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sure. Long answer, yes, yeah, or short answer, yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We would need to set up a separate revenue line item and and just know, you know, that we're only budgeting the next year what was brought in the year before, essentially, I would think something like that. Maybe you could find some golfers to drive down to Phoenix to pick up the stones and get it. Yeah, shipping's right. expensive. Okay. They they all call, <laughs> come on each, they come on their own individual pallet and they're all, you know, strapped down and covered. and. Once they're off the truck, they're not horrible to get out where you want. Um, it's actually hollow inside, so it's not that hard to move around and position where you want it. It's just the getting them here and off the truck. And, and then we would, you know, over the winter, you know, obviously I'm trying to get this going because pretty soon Jeannie's going to tell me it's too late. Um, <laughs> but the plan is if you guys can approve this idea tonight, um, I will email the lady tomorrow. They will start working on them. We'll have them in about four to five weeks. So that puts us at the end of December-ish. Um, I can get the bills paid before Jeannie tells me it's too late. Um, they come on a truck. Hopefully weather is good and Matt and his staff can start putting them out right away this winter. So. Matt's going no. <laughs> and then we can finalize the whole sponsor program, make a list of potential businesses that we want to approach. Um, in my old job, I wrote like a letter um, that I sent to those businesses along with the kind of program on how it worked, the contract, so. Well, I like the advertising idea. Um, I don't think it's too much. Um, and we, if it's popular, you can always raise it later on, but. Uh, yeah, and you know, and, and maybe Dan, you want to look at that price more from the aspect of recuperating the cost of the T signs, you know, and I guess that's how I did it in Farmington. We were trying to sell the initial advertisement to cover the cost of the signs, and then every year after that would be revenue. So we can kind of look at it from that standpoint too. But I think you're right. Maybe I was a little low on my estimate. No, I, I, for out here, I, I think it's probably a good starting point. Yeah. I'd rather sell all 18 than sell four and have the rest of the holes empty. Will we just put oil blues plaques or something in? Would we just put City of Fort Morgan or something in there? That's one thing I want to confirm uh, with the company. Uh, I want to try to get an idea of what it's going to look like without a plaque there. I, I, I think it's, it's, I don't even know that you'd notice that the plaque is not there unless you're right up on the rock. Um, but I think I'll double check on that. I, I don't want an ugly rock, you know, on one hole and a nice looking rock on the other. So I'd figure that out for sure. But yeah, I think the city of Fort Morgan could probably sponsor one of those holes. I think you'll be surprised at the number of people that will want to, that will want to sponsor. I think. Yeah. I, I don't, I think you're, you're, you're questioning. I think you won't have a problem. I think we'll be able to come up with a pretty good list of people to approach on it for sure. And I think it's a great idea. I appreciate Ty looking into these things and trying to make uh, golf course more visible and finding ways to recover the money as well. And you make it people that want to do like a memorial plaque. Yeah, that would, which I, I know of a couple of families that may be interested in that. And I think the idea would be, you know, first come, first serve. So, um, you know, if Dan, if your company's first one to sign up, you would get to pick what hole you wanted to be on, and we would have a priority list that way. So. Good job. Well, I've been debating about it since <laughs> since I read about it. Uh, still, we can talk later. On whether or not my uh, I can have my company do that. <laughs> that's right that's it that's even an individual person could, you can come up with five hundred dollars and it's mm -hmm. appropriate mm -hmm. <laughs> any other questions for ty did you get what you needed from us ty yes yeah, for the discussion yeah. piece okay i think so thank you we need a resolution on the yeah, yeah he does that's why i said not yet <laughs> well, he got from, yeah, we're waiting. Give us an invite. 
<laughs> Would you like to sign up for a sponsorship? <laughs> yes. Oh, not the invite you're looking for? Ah. <laughs> uh. There's no other questions. I'd entertain a resolution. Your Honor, I have a resolution to approve the bid from Silex Signs for 1830 by 36 whole signs. Um, that doesn't include the whole layout for $19,476.17, and the project cannot exceed $20,000. Second. I have a resolution by Allison Howe and a second by Lisa Northrup. Vote by roll call. That resolution carries unanimously. Now he has what he needs. <laughs> And Jeannie even said yes. Yay. <laughs> Next is a presentation of possible action on a resolution authorizing the mayor to sign a memorandum of understanding between the city and the Colorado Department of Corrections. Chief Schultz. Mayor, City Council, um, we present uh, <clears throat> to you a request uh, for approval of a resolution for a memorandum of understanding for what's known as mutual aid with the uh, Fort Morgan Police Department and the Colorado Department of Corrections, uh, primarily at their Sterling facility. Uh, very standard uh, memorandum of understanding. Uh, it has been approved in the past. It's currently uh, being requested to be renewed by uh, the Department of Corrections uh, in the unlikely event that there is an incident out there requiring assistance from local law enforcement. Any questions? We have a mutual aid understanding with a lot of other agencies also, don't we? Do, yes. they, do they get renewed on a regular basis or are they per perpetuity pretty much? I, I think there's some in each category. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also a state statute that covers mutual aid as well. Okay. Anybody have, anybody have any other questions? If not, I would entertain a resolution. Your Honor, I would offer resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a memorandum of understanding with the Colorado Department of Corrections. Second. I have a resolution by Lisa Northrup, a second by Allison Howe. Vote by roll call. That resolution carries unanimously. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda. Mr. Brennan. Thank you, Your Honor. Tonight's consent agenda includes item A, approval of the disbursements and payroll for October, and item B, approval of the minutes of the November 6, 2018 City Council regular meeting. All matters on the consent agenda are considered routine business by the Council and will be enacted with a single motion and a single vote by roll call. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion is deemed necessary, that item should be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. entertain a resolution accepting them as presented. You want our offer resolution to accept the consent agenda as presented? Second. <laughs> I have a resolution by Allison Howe, a second by Doug Sasha. Vote by roll call. That resolution carries unanimously. Next is public comment and audience participation for items not on the agenda. Seeing none, reports by officials and staff. I don't think we have uh, a whole lot to report. It's a short week this week, and we've got um, obviously Thursday and Friday off. I want to thank Council for authorizing Friday off for the employees, and I'm sure they'll take full advantage of that to rest and relax and work off a little bit of that extra they had on Thursday. Um, did you have anything, Ty, that you wanted to bring up? Yeah, you've got yep. to come up here. <laughs> <laughs> you can't yell from the back. <laughs> um, I was going to say it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. But anyways, Christmas Capital of the Plains starts Saturday, I think, with Santa's house and a free movie. And then the parade is the 29th, I believe. And then all the Saturday stuff starts after that. And if you've been around to um, some of the different parks, we've got about half of the bronze sculptures up. So the dog parks are up. We've got another sculpture at the library. The benches are at the library. Um, skateboard park one. And I might be missing one or two. But 
we're making progress. So they're getting out there. We don't have the plaques yet, but we're working on it. So just an update on that. They look good. Yeah, they're pretty cool. <clears throat> Thanks, Ty. Um, the only thing I'd like to do is uh, also recognize our streets department. We had a little bit of snow over the weekend, and uh, I think they did an excellent job in getting that cleaned up. And um, you know, it, it gets kind of busy for them this time of the year when the storms come through. So I want to thank them for what they're doing. And um, are there any questions from council that we can address? When's leaf pickup? Leaf pickup is ongoing. We've already covered a lot of the city, and one of the things that we have is that people put the leaves out after we've gone by, we don't pick them up a second time. So <laughs> if you've seen where there were leaves in the road and they're no longer there, that means that it's too late to put them in the road. Uh, so we're just about done with that. Okay, because they had picked up in Brenda Joy area and there's a pass will pull out there again. <laughs> yeah, it's a one-time deal, so. Uh, <laughs> it goes till uh, Monday. It goes till Monday. So. They'll come around if okay. if they're out by Monday. They'll come around eventually and get them. Okay. Okay. Well, then the snow will help them from blowing and the wind blows. <laughs> yeah, they did get heavier when they got wet. Yes, they <laughs> did. And a little coolness will turn them into a one scoop pickup. <laughs> okay. Bids, meetings, announcements, Mr. Brennan. Thank you, Your Honor. The uh, city is accepting sealed proposals for the repair of hail damaged city vehicles until 4 p.m. next Monday, November 26th. Um, sealed proposals for wastewater treatment plant mechanical bar screen procurement until 3 p.m. on November 27th. And qualifications and proposals to prepare a city campus slash complex master plan and facilities design until 3 p.m. on December 3rd. Um, under meetings, um, as Jeff mentioned, city offices will be closed uh, on <laughs> Thursday and Friday of this week. The Heritage Foundation is scheduled to meet November 29th at 4 p.m. in the community room. And the next city council regular meeting uh, will be December 4th at 6 p.m. here at City Hall. Okay. Next item on the agenda is an executive session for discussion of a personnel matter under CRS section 24-6-4024F and not involving any specific employee who has requested discussion of the personnel of the matter in open session, any member of this body or elected official, the appointment of any person to fill an office of this body or of an elected official, a personnel policies that or a personal policies that do not require the discussion of matters personal to matters to particular employees. And the following additional details are provided for identification purposes. Council to interview the two finalists for the municipal judge position. I would entertain a motion to retire to executive session. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Lisa Northrup, second by Dan Marler. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And Your Honor, just uh, as a point of uh, information, we have the two candidates here are Karen Walker and Charles Peters. Um, Charles had asked that he go second because he had a trial today and thought he might be late. He's obviously here. but. Uh, so when you guys go into the executive session, um, when you're ready for the first candidate, just um, let us know and we'll send them in and then swap them out. So are we drawing straws for them to then since? No, I think. Uh, She's pointing. <laughs> <laughs> so John, are we okay. adjourned? I, I 